<laughs> What's going on, everybody? All right. I hear my man Rob. Actually, it's so funny we were talking, and I said, "Look, Rob, man, let's sit down and share. You know, your experience stuff with people." Actually, he was like the second guy to run into me when I first came to the conference here, VIB. So, Rob, what's going on? Hey, nothing much. You know, hanging out with Eric Coffee. I've met you in person. Yeah. I've been listening to you since 2019. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I was kind of excited. I'm gonna lie, VIB conference has been great so far. Yeah, no, listen. You know, and again, it's not a lot of people here, right? right. But you get to talk and spend time with the people, the, whoever it is that you want to meet, supply diversity folks. So there's not a lot of competition to get down and network and talk to folks, which I love. Right. Right. Exactly. Because so many people claim that they want to be in front of these folks. So if you want to be in front of them, how you get in front of them sitting at home? <laughs> hey, <laughs> you better come on out. I mean, I've been here for the past couple of days. I already got a couple of opportunities. Yeah. Um, and then another opportunity came up where this lady was like, hey, you know, you sign up, we'll put you in front of 100 people and you pitch your capability statement and then uh, you get business because they're looking for veteran, um, you know, businesses and, and other businesses as well to provide so, services. So tell me, uh, yeah. tell the people the truth. You're talking about you sitting home at a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> How, you got, how did you get started? Tell me how you got started. All right, so, it, you know, I was a sales rep. I mean, life was pretty good. I was sitting at home in a onesie, yeah. and uh, one of my army, uh, not army, but Air Force Colonel guys was like, man, this guy's making, you know, millions in government contracting. You, you much more smarter than him, Rob. And so like, I Googled, I didn't know nothing about government contracting, even though I was selling to the government <laughs> through my job. Right. But anyway, sitting home in a onesie, I was Googling like, you know, government contracting, and then Eric Coffee popped up. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward, listening to Eric, getting everything in place. Uh, but still, in the, in the onesie, not taking uh, too much action. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> let's go. Let's I know you're gonna say. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. say yeah. you know, then my amigos called me up, uh -huh. <laughs> and they was like, "Hey man, yeah. can you help us out? We know you you a great salesman. Uh, we got a debt company, renovation company. Uh, we're gonna run a commercial. Can you help us out?" I said, "No problem." And so. I was doing four appointments a day, even hire somebody to help me out to measure and things like that. Because I, even though I was an engineer in the army, I didn't, I wasn't um, doing construction. So anyway, I hired M. Jack. He helped me out, and then the journey was, hey, I'm doing four appointments a day, talking to homeowners, getting a deck and renovation um, uh, contracts, and I was pretty much like the prime. Because even though my friends owned the company, they saw me as the face and all the problems or the solutions, things like that. Um, I was making it happen and taking care of everything. Now you said that when you start doing that, mm -hmm. you start seeing the money coming through. Start seeing the money coming <laughs> through. It was crazy, right? I got 10% of everything I sold, but I was like, man, if I'm making 10%, these Migos, they making millions. <laughs> and it was, they, I mean, they didn't look like much, but they was millionaires. Yeah. And then um, I, that's when I started listening to Eric even more. He said, what'd you take? Turn it up 10X? <laughs> I turned it up 10X and started like doing everything. Yeah, jumped in. Um, has been working out ever since. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna lie. One thing, I was already selling to the government and um, I already had some connections. Okay. And so, I didn't even have the licenses yet. I was still going through the process. It took me a year. But I went to the VA in Richmond, yeah. I'm from Virginia. And um, I go see one of the officers. I'm like, hey, I'm SDVUSB and all that. Yeah. And he was like, I got $5 million right now. It don't happen like that, but yes, I already knew him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, I got $5 million. And I was like, oh, I, I can't do it. <laughs> and I got the license. He's like, oh, get out of here. Yeah. He, 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 he didn't call me worthless, but pretty much. So, yeah. Now, but some other things that you said, yeah. when you first got started, mm -hmm. right, even watching our content, you said you start your LLC. Like you did the basics. I did the basics, yes. LLC. You went and got your license, Class A license. Class A, yep. You know, basic stuff like that. And then we went on and you expanded upon that and you said, hey, look, I just follow all the steps. Now, last night you were saying, if the people don't follow the steps, what you were saying? <laughs> oh, if you were <laughs> I mean, tell, you know, whatever you feel comfortable. Uh, I'm cool, man. I don't care about book. I said, man, if you don't follow these steps and you don't take action, I'm like pretty much said you're dumb. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, it's simple. Like, I didn't know anything, how to start, or even how to, I mean, it's a continuous journey, so I can't say finish. Right. But I listened to Eric. I mean, I took all his courses, and then he just broke it down, and I did everything Eric said. He said, hey, this is how you do it. LLC, boom. 
This is how you uh, get your licenses. This is how you get the line of credits. This is how you get um, vendor credit. Right. Uh, and so I just did all the steps. Uh, this is how you build relationships. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now you said we were just talking about right just right before we started about the vendor credit thing. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about the vendor credit. How did that go for you? Very well. I mean, I used Eric <laughs> as a source. Like he said, he said, "Hey, use me," and he right. showed me. Yeah. I filled it out. I said, "Hey, he's one of my um, uh, trade references." Right. So I got ten thousand at uh, Nefco, uh, fifty thousand at Posner's. Yeah. Uh, even got a bond line of credit yeah. over half a million. It's about to go to a million. Tell us the bond story. I like that story. The bond. Oh, the bond. <laughs> All right, so I'm a new company. You know, bonding is tough, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you get you a new company, you do no projects, no past performance. They're not trying to give you no bonding credit. So I'm just calling around and trying to get, you know, some bonding. And it's yeah. like, nah, forget that. We ain't gonna bond you. You don't got no project. Get out of here. <laughs> ah, no. And then um, I just kept cold calling because I'm a sales guy, right? And then I, I met Ruth Pale. She was like, oh, we'll give you half a million. And then after that, you you complete one project, we'll get you a million. And then you get your CPA uh, financials together. Then we'd get you to, you know, two to five. And so that's how I did it. If I would stop that one note, I heard a lot of no's because bonding credit, I mean, it's, it's tough in the construction industry because sure. it's high risk. Yeah. And so nobody, if you're a new company, they're not going to try to, and they don't want to bond you out. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Right. Your labor force, how did you get started? Like, how did you have, how do you know how to bid a project, write an RP, all that kind of stuff? Obviously, you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you put the team together. Right. So, so, okay. So, you told me how to do it, but however, I don't like putting no RFPs together and things like that. Yeah. So I knew a guy that I used to work with. Uh -huh. He's a um, retired Air Force guy, and um, he he does this stuff for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He got big monitors. I was like, hey man, you want to make some money? I was like, look, I can't pay you up front, but we can do some contracts. I help you out. He was right. looking for a job. He was like, huh. But anyway. So yeah, so looking for a job. I can tell the story. Yeah, he was looking for a job, and then I was like, look, man. You ain't gonna want to look for a job when his first contract. You'll see. So he he does all my RFP source of sites, RFIs. He loves it. And then um we want we want some contracts, things like that. And then I gave him his first check, like 10k. Yeah. Boom. He ain't looking for a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all he does is work. He he works for me. And then um so the construction piece too. So I ain't know much. Even though I was an engineer, I did construction in the army, things like that. Obviously, I didn't do it for years. So I was like, okay, I can do this. I knew a guy named. I dropped names, I don't care, Frank. Yeah. And Frank was like, Frank been doing this for 20 something years, he a VP of a company. And uh, he was like, yeah, I wanna make some money, man. He was like, I help you out. Yeah. And so that's how I got all my subcontractors. He taught me how to price the jobs. He was like, we're not gonna lose no money. We gonna, we gonna do this the right way. Cause I've been, I seen right, companies right. coming up. Yeah. yeah. And that's how I built my team. No, and, and see, the reason why I say that is because, again, like we were talking about offline is that so many people think, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that. They're looking for excuses, in my opinion. Right. Right, instead of solutions. And you were like, nah, Eric said I could get that, and I ain't gonna pay for it, I can get that, I don't pay for it, and you started doing it. Right. So you start, you built a letter of credit. You built a line of credit. Yes. You, you got a project manager, you got the estimator, <laughs> you got a, oh God, I'm seriously. And, yeah. and you didn't have to pay any money up front. No money up front, and I have, so, one day, <laughs> at home in a onesie, I still wear a onesie. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I check my junk email, and then it's like a company that says, hey, we do design, build, yeah. and we would like to talk to you. And I was like, what? And then I talked to Frank, he's like, no, we need them yeah. but for these projects. So it happens to be they was in Tennessee, and I was heading to the Smoky Mountains. So these guys said, hey, man, we're going to take you out. we will get steak. We, we, man, we want to work with you. And so I went to Tennessee, we met. Yeah. Um, Did they take you out and get you some steak? Yeah, everything. <laughs> they was wine and dime, like I was a multi-million dollar company, right? And he was like, hey man, we know we know what it is. Pay when paid. We can do everything for you. And I used it for a couple pay projects. Pay when paid. Pay when paid. That's how I do it. And my subs, they love me because I pay them uh, on time and when I say I'm gonna do it. Um, and the design build company out of Tennessee, they do work for me. Uh, and sometimes pro bono, I had to do uh, some private projects, they said, oh no, we'll do the plat for you, Rob. We'll do pro bono, you're good. Just call us when that building's coming out the ground at William & Mary. So, yeah, no money. Shoe I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Shoestring budget. Shoestring budget. And then, and I also have my hands in other things as well. Sure. So I do have, so waiting on the federal contract, you know, they take forever. Sure. I do, I was going after state um, pre-qualified contract, con uh, contracts and I won three of those with William & Mary ODU uh -huh. 
and um, VMI. Okay. And just because you win those doesn't mean they just pour contracts on your right, work. Right, right, right. I called them up and said, hey, I won this. Can I come down, you know, do a capability brief? They yep. say yes. It was a great, it was great. I said that because when I came down, they liked me. Then they introduced me to all the facility managers and I ended up getting a plumbing drywall contract uh, that's, that's going to take place next week at ODU. Okay. So, nice. Yeah. Now, tell us, because like you said, you're an open book. I mean, uh -huh. you're not at the million dollars levels, right? You're just, no. You're just getting started. Just getting started. Uh, first contract, 50K. 50K, 50K. first contract. Okay. Um, and, and let me tell you why I say that. Because believe it or not, mm -hmm. uh, even though you listen to me, some people are turned off by million dollar contracts because they're afraid that they can't handle it, which in your experience, that first $5 million contract, talk to, talk to us about that. Yes. So when I went to the VA in Richmond and I, I spoke with him and he was like, I got $5 million and I told him I couldn't do it. It was a blessing in disguise. Why? Because if you would have gave me that contract, I couldn't perform it. Right. I right. didn't have, not enough. I didn't have no license to get that. I didn't have no line of credit. I didn't have no bonding credit. Sure. I didn't have no, I mean, no past performance. I didn't have anything. Right. So if he would have me a contract, I would have went belly up. Right. My, my CPAR score would have been horrible. And, sure. he's, and they talked amongst the federal arena sure. and I would never got another job. Right. Yep. Right. So I wasn't prepared. So right. I was happy. So you're happy. So now, so $50,000 contract is manageable. You're able to pull it off. Right. How long did it take? For that? Yeah. Um, I just did it probably like a year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, well, when I say a year, a year to get everything, so I would say two months. To to actually, yeah, to perform the work. Right. Perform okay. the work. Yeah. Right. All right. And you make money. I made money. Okay. Um, and so that, and I got a sole source coming down from the VA of Richmond. That's around probably 200000 to renovate okay. the buildings. Sure. Um, and see, for me, I like that because that's practical. Right. For everybody who's listening, I think if, if they took and did the things they did and received a $50,000 contract and a 200000 source, I think most would be really happy. Yeah, I was happy. And I made money off of it, right? Because, like, you look at the big... I don't know about, about to spit some game here. So <laughs> this guy, he told me, he was like, Rob, you don't want to go big like that because you'll go bankrupt and then you go upside down. He's like, you want to start small and gradually work your way up. And if you're in the construction industry, uh, that's a good thing to do because the bonding companies like that. So when I, I got the bonding because I told my story. I said, hey, look, I'm not trying to be $20 million out the gate. I'm gradually working my way up and the underwriter liked that. He, he loved the story yeah. and he was willing to take a chance on me. And we have a great relationship to this day. Wow. Yeah. And that's just my you cold call. Cold call. <laughs> Bonding company. Now he loves it. He loves me, right? I mean, because I, I, I get work now. And I, yes, I'm in a federal state and I also do private too. So, sure. Yeah. So, no, and again, you're, you're diversifying your right. business because you are starting off, so there is some ups and downs, right? right? You don't have consistent workflow yet. Exactly. But but that's okay. That's I mean, what I the reason why we're talking is because I love that you said, hey, I was sitting with a onesie, working a regular sales job, and I was all right, I'm content with life. Like, yeah. I was good. I'm good. Got my disability. Got my disability, right? Service disabled right. veteran. Like life is good. And a lot of people sit home identify with that. Right. And that's why I it, you know, it struck a chord with me because I'm like, wow. So you sat back and said, you know what? Now you said someone, the first guy encouraged you, said somebody's making millions of dollars and you can do that. Yes. Yeah. Still. It's still. Still didn't do nothing. I mean, I, I looked you up, found you. I didn't know you, but I looked, saw you, found you, yeah. did, the, did the, the groundwork, but still was right. like, I'm still good. You know, like, you know. And you actually, you're in Virginia. Yes. Or, or, well, yes, Arlington. And we're recording in Sacramento today. So. I do everything Eric said, right? <laughs> he said, hey, you need to come to this conference, VIB. I ain't know nothing about it. I just looked it up and I signed up for everything. The social, the dinners, coming out here, flying out. Right. Um, didn't even hesitate. Booked my ticket two months in advance. Yeah. Uh, hotel, everything. Didn't, I mean, I didn't even think about anything. Right. I just said, hey, Eric said, come to the VIB. You go meet some people. I'm here. It worked out. Uh, and I'm not just saying that. It really did. Like I said, I met uh, Arlington, Texas guy. He's like, hey, man, we got projects coming down. We need veteran uh, businesses, construction. Would you be interested? Yes, I would. Right. Gave him his car. Or he gave me his car and I gave him my, my car. i do some business. And he was like, hey, we do a conference like this. Fly down. Maybe you can talk. That was one person. Met another lady, Nancy. Now, he wanted you to actually talk on stage. Yes. <laughs> he to, right. He wants to he give wants me projects. To give projects. And then speak to the veterans about um, winning contracts, winning contracts, being a prime, things like that. 
uh, next Nancy. This is the private sector, but she was like, hey, get your certification. Um, but he, Nancy's from T-Mobile. No, nah, nah, Nancy's um. Which one? She works for the. Ah, uh, she got Chicago. I got a card right here. Okay, hold on. Let me see right here. The National Veteran Owned Business Association. Okay, gotcha. All right. I was talking to the other uh, business owner. He was like, "Yeah, do that because once you register with that, she puts you in front of a hundred companies. You do your capabilities brief, yeah, and then you get business that way because they're looking for a veteran, uh, well, construction companies, okay, to or whatever service you provide. Right, they're looking for that. Yeah. Right, yeah. So well, that's a good thing. Uh, that's another content. And I met so many people here, um, and they're willing to help you out, you know, because they all in the same. A lot of a lot of um, knowledge. Uh, like I say, it's, we all veterans. People want to help you. Yeah, I, and I and so for me again, going back to the theme, uh, what you just said, people want to help you. Yeah. We forget, or maybe we just take it for granted. You knew all these people. You weren't using them. All the people that you work with today. Yes. Were in your circle of your sphere of influence. Wasn't doing nothing with them. Didn't talk to Frank for over two years. Now he's my right hand man. Every time we go price a job or go see about staking the work, he's right there. Didn't even speak to the guy. Two years. And I, and I think a lot of people that are watching that are going to see this video, you have the same type of sphere of influence. You're just not tapping into them. And you would be surprised, pleasantly surprised, how many people actually would love to support you and help you. They're looking for a side hustle. They're looking for a side gig. Maybe they're not happy with their company. And they just never told you that because you never reached back to them with an opportunity. And so now you come out and you say, hey, look, I got this opportunity for you that I'm going after, and like you said, you said you put everything together already, mm -hmm. so they don't have to leave their job, Nothing. they don't leave their company, and they can help you on the side. Help me on the side, and they love it, because I tee everything up, and they love that. And so I, now you're, because you're ultimately responsible, right? so they, so that takes the burden off of them. It's like, wait, I just gotta do my little part. <laughs> That's it. And I get a 10K check. 10K check, don't even have to put up no capital. I'm doing everything, I mean, as far as like, right. selling, selling yeah. the face of the company. Right. Yep. So, but that's a great relationship. Like I was explaining to my son, we all need each other. Like no one, we can't service T-Mobile as a client or U.S. California Water Supply with just one person. No. We need a team of people and you're able to put it, but what I love is that you're able to put a team of people together with like Sue String Budget. Sue String Budget, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not no huge construction company. Right. You know, I mean, and all the stories I heard, everybody started off. Like, well, a lot of people. Like, oh, you know, this is the podcast. Oh, yeah, I was hauling and, you know, making, uh, I guess the guy, you yeah, know, talking about the yeah, banker. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'd hear all these stories. And, and then little by little, you just got to keep going. There was another uh, person, podcast that you were referencing just a minute ago. Instead of talking to the contracting officers, they're telling you to talk to other people. Yes. Yeah. So, I once again, listen to Eric podcast. Uh, I forgot the lady's name, but she said, hey, you know, going after the contracting officers, that's fine. But she was like, you want to get the people, who, the boots on the ground. And that's what I did. And so, I met the carpentry supervisor and he was like, oh, I help you out. And then, because he can recommend anybody he wants. That's what I started doing. So, my business development is get the guy, people on boots on the ground, yeah. the facility manager, the carpentry supervisor, yeah. because they'd be your biggest advocate. And then they got influence, because they they optimally responsible for that project as well, right. in, sure. their, in their little um, circle. Nice. So. Nice. No, no, nah, nah, man. So, so what's your, your future looking like? <laughs> right, I mean, <laughs> I'm about to go back home, tee up these, I got three projects about to go. So the plumbing project, ODU, I have a concrete job at a school. I'm everywhere, and then um, I got a, a hardware hardware uh, job. It's about to happen at um, Howard Hughes. So I'm booked out. I, I was on the phone just now talking to the plumber, getting the estimates uh, together to send to Randy. Okay. So they can put the package together. Yeah, but then we got a source of sod that's going out, and then um, I do have a meeting with the VA Richmond. You spoke, we spoke today. So you said you don't even look at your source of sod no more. Someone else does it for you. Yes. So like <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, I, oh. I know when you're starting out, you, you try to be a one-man show, but you got to take all that off your plate. Try to outsource it. I'm not and like my accounting; everything is outsourced. Yeah. Because um, I just focus on business development and building relationships, sure. and bringing in revenue. Um, and so I don't got time to be. I mean, I look them over. Don't get me wrong, but I don't got time to be like, oh, source of sod, putting that stuff together, or like an RFP or RFQ. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work, and yeah. I think again, I think we're we're all thinking about saving money. Yes. Right, and 
saving money doesn't mean you do it all yourself. <laughs> exactly. You get burnt out. You get burnt out. You, and, you then can't do and then you get then you're like, oh this process doesn't work. Right. Right. I'm not having any success. And like uh, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're like I submitted all these RFIs and I didn't get nothing. But that's because why you don't have the best person necessarily. You're not necessarily the best person to write that. Exactly. Or estimate the job. Because like yeah, you can't estimate the, to be the great estimator, mm-hmm. the great writer. A great accountant, a great bookkeeper. You can't do it. Like I, I think early on I knew, like, my role. Like I am the face. I'm a great, you know, sales guy and BD. Yeah. Okay, but I'm not no RFP sources side putting stuff together. Yeah. So I had to find somebody like that. They went construction. Okay, I need a project manager who knows what they're doing. Yep. Didn't know when they're trying to, you know, get over on me. Sure. And so it's working out for me. I'm having fun because, you know. I love it. I love it. Good coffee, man. No, man, listen, again, I'm, I'm happy. I, I love to get a chance to hear the stories and meet people in real life and then learn, like, like they actually took the information and did something with it. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy because, and that's why I want you to come on more of a motivational to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, cause, cause people sometimes like, ah, I just missed this. I'm going to do this part, but not this part. I'm going to do this part, but not that part. And you're like, no, nah, I'm doing all this stuff. And, uh, you got to do it all. Yeah. You read the benefits, the rewards. Love it. I mean, it's a long process, but... It's worth it. I got you out the onesies. Got me out the onesies. Man. <laughs> now, I bought me a new onesies. Army fatigue style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My other ones, you got holes in it. I was in it too much. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate no you problem. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate right. you too, right, man. Baby.